Hello everybody and welcome to the EB Podcast. It's September the 5th and that doesn't only mean that I get to go back to dealing with the horrors of sick form, it means the British Parliament returns from their summers spent shit-stirring, backstabbing and sipping champagne in Ibiza at the taxpayer's expense in order to get back to what they're meant to do, with Brexit being the largest elephant in the room. But unfortunately I must start with someone who seems to have forgotten who they are. Uh, Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt decided to tweet uh, yesterday. He said, quote, We know up to 1 in 12 prescriptions contain mistakes. We need an open conversation about the dangers of medication errors and how to stop them. Now this is great. As someone who's a supporter of the government on many, mainly economic issues, I think it's great to see our government members outlining the issues that need to be solved. However, Jeremy Hunt is, well, the Health Secretary which means he's in charge of every subject he is tweeting about here. So I sent a reply, reminding him of the job he's meant to be doing, hoping the person who operates his account would possibly see it. Due to the fact he has a smaller number of replies compared to other government figures, mainly due to the fact that many people hate him. However, about an hour later, he did the exact same thing again. He said, we need to do better at access to NHS mental health services for young people, but also need to look at potential causes of problems, e.g. social media. Now, I was tempted to say that he may have just scheduled the tweet and not thought about looking at the feedback he received on the earlier one, but it seems to me that if he's stupid enough to make the same mistake twice, then he deserves a backlash. I have to be honest, many politicians are always very quick to point out the problems in our society, and especially within their department, and then tell us that they're going to solve the problem. This is what we see with many politicians from left wing and right wing all over the world. But that's got about as much conviction as me telling my mum I've been revising all afternoon. I'd much rather Jeremy Hunt and other government officials, especially conservatives in the current limelight, solve the problems first in private, and then they'd be able to express the public with their results and impress them. Wait until results start coming in and then publish them. This creates a double win situation, right? Because you get off, uh, you get to show off your government's progress uh, and silence those who are going to criticize your schemes before they've been put in place. Now, uh, moving on, it was announced on Friday that UK manufacturing increased by 29 percent over the month this is always good and provides good antidote for our brexit blues also the bank of england indicated that we may not see an interest rate rise until 2019 this is also good Uh, it provides some security to home buyers with variable rates and gives them time to prepare for an increase however a low interest rate ours is at 0.25 percent at the moment i believe encourages spending in the economy because people aren't getting as much money putting their cash in a bank account as I'm sure many of you have experienced so they may as well spend it. What happens is businesses see this rise in demand and increase prices to match that demand which is why we've seen inflation increase to 2.9% in late April and then hold at 2.6% these last few days. Although the main areas where prices have risen are in utilities, clothes and food, which is what most of our money as citizens get spent on. So that's definitely something that the government should look at solving, or at least give a target uh, to, to the Bank of England, to have a little communication with Mark Kearney. Now, okay, now keeping on the subject of the UK economy, the FTSE 100, which is our main stock market, uh, fell yesterday. Uh, Many analysts said it was due to a shift to safe stocks by mutual funds and investors due to the rising tensions between North Korea and just about everyone else, it seems. Now, I'm very confused about this issue. Uh, It seems as if Theresa May and other Western leaders have forgotten that we are the largest and most powerful nuclear countries in the world. There seems to be an awful lot of talk about using diplomatic methods. I mean, I'm not a warmonger. I believe that we should exhaust all diplomatic efforts before engaging in war, which I learned during GCSE history when we studied the Cuban Missile Crisis, right? However, it does appear to me that Kim Jong-un is not prepared to take this diplomatic route. He signalled multiple times that he's going to build nuclear weapons, and multiple times he's threatened sanctions. We've threatened sanctions on him. We've put different... uh, sanctions in place and rules in place and we talked tough to him and then he's just gone and actually done what he set out to do in the first place 
So I think personally that it's time to call his bluff. What the US, the UK and others need to do is say, if you fire another weapon at or near a foreign country, then we will decimate you or respond with massive military action. This is what Trump said yesterday. Now, I know that sounds uh, quite strong terms, but it's the only terms Kim Jong-un understands. You know, later last evening, the US told the UN that Kim is begging for war, as two days ago. Those were the words of US Ambassador Nikki Haley. Uh, and when the US starts talking about war, especially with Trump at the helm, it does make you think that war itself is on the way. So it will be interesting to see how that situation develops. Um, so we've got some more news now. The government said yesterday that our terror threat will remain at the same for the next five years. I believe it is at critical or it might have been downgraded. I have to check that. Now, I'm only a 17 year old economics and politics student, so I'm not the greatest expert in anti-terror methods. But I have to suggest it may be the only case if we continue to take on our terror threat in the same way we have done previously right we will continue to have this threat we'll continue to have this uh, situation this um classification of our of our risk if we continue in the same way i think we need to adopt a different policy now our current method would work i feel if we had enough resources however due to government carrying out what i feel certainly necessary budget cuts due to labor's uh, overspending during the last labor government we at full capacity have the resources to monitor 3,000 potential terrorists with a predicted 18,000 or more needing 24-7 monitoring to make sure that they don't attack us. Now, when you think about this, there is a bigger problem here. Because let's just say there are these 20,000 potential jihadists and other terrorists such as, you know, far right, maybe Antifa or other far left groups, they grow presence in the UK. Then each person may represent say three or more let's say people on average bringing the total to 72,000 that is a lot especially considering recent political uh, potential future attacks that have been carried out by one person so how do we solve this problem well one method that I would recommend is introducing a scheme where if a person commits a terrorist act we deport them as many on the left and right have suggested and their immediate family now, this, in my opinion, uh, creates a deterrent for families, particularly those from less developed and poorer countries, because they won't want to, you know, travel back from the sort of great giving nation that we are with our NHS and our, uh, you know, taxes that pay for public services. We need to get tougher and also utilise the goodwill of the majority of people from all backgrounds to solve this now large scale issue. Uh, if we make sure that families have this deterrent in place it makes them more likely to uh, report if a family member or a friend is carrying out these attacks or is planning on carrying out these attacks we have more than 60 million people in this country and it just makes sense to use them use their goodwill use deterrence if we need to to make sure that we keep our population safe so that is all for now. I will be back tomorrow with more. I have more on Brexit as David Davis is set to give his address to Parliament shortly. And I believe that PMQs will also be making a return, so I'm sure there'll be a lot to say about that. Also, it seems that a big issue today is the Brexit bill, so I'll bring you my thoughts on that as well. So, once again, I'm Max EB, and this is the Max EB Podcast.